Howdy, I'm Greg Pilgrim. Well, this is take two of this thing. First time I bought a brand new SD card, 64 gig, at a local store, slapped it in and made the, my very first ever recording with it. And the thing went blink, blink and stopped working. <laughs> they just don't build them like they used to. Right now I'm down to two cards that work on this. One of them is a 16 gig and one of them is a 32. So uh, I'll try to make it fast. <laughs> Anyway, I'm interested in a gun. This gun. Uh, why this gun? This is model 1892 New Army and Navy. And this particular gun I really, really like. I cherish it. It looks like hell, but it's, it looks wonderful to me <clears throat> for one reason. This belonged to my great-grandfather. He bought it brand new in 1893. He also bought this holster with it at the same time. Anyway, this pistol, it, it, uh, it won't lock up. I mean, it will lock when it's cocked, but uh, other than that, it's, it, it's a little bit wonky in there. It's missing the uh, uh, thing that you push on for the, uh, the center crane, but it uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, I could buy a new one from Colt, I suppose, or from a, you know, uh, Brownell or, or uh, Numerich or somebody like that, but uh, why bother? I just I just want to keep this in as good a shape as I can and pass it on to my son Because it is a family heirloom Now the one thing I've done is I got the factory letter on it and this was got came to me in the 1980s uh, Looks like it was 1989 uh, this was put together by a lady who was the, the cult historian at the time. Her name was Kathleen Hoyt, and she was a, a, a noted gun uh, store or gun uh, uh, world uh, historian of the time. It's funny because back then, instead of uh, shooting off an email or an Instagram or a text or, or texting her or something like that, I actually wrote an, an actual snail mail letter to them and said, and how much would it cost me? And I think it was like $45 or something. So I just sent them a check. They cashed it. And then uh, about a month or so later, I got this uh, piece of paper. And it's on this beautiful uh, uh, embossed paper. Uh, and it's, uh, it's got a picture of the old Colt factory on it. And it's kind of cool. This is from the Office of the Historian. Well, it tells me a few things. First of all, this is in 1892. It's in 41 Long Colt, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, it was one of a batch of five that was purchased at the same time by a company called Hartley and Graham in New York City. Well, who is Hartley and Graham? Well, this is a picture of a, a page from one of their catalogs. And Hartley and Graham was a big uh, wholesale supplier of, of ordnance and uh, hardware, basically of all kinds, you know, like axes or saws or plows that they'd ship off to the West. Well, this particular gun I know was purchased by my great grandfather when he was in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, he originally started out in Missouri. He was a lead miner. And uh, he'd gone around, uh, I don't know, uh, had ended up in Kansas City and went into, I assume, a hardware store and saw this and said, yeah, I think I'll get one of those. And plopped down his monthly uh, wages and bought it. And I'm sure that's about what it cost. And uh, anyway, soon after that, he had some kind of an ailment. I don't know exactly what, but he had some kind of an ailment. He, he had been traveling around the Midwest uh, looking for work and doing this and that. And uh, anyway, he stopped in Cincinnati. He's looking for a doctor. So he looks up a doctor. I don't know if the phone book or, or uh, word of mouth in the saloon. I have no idea where. But uh, this physician, uh, he knocks on the, 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 the guy's uh, clinic door and uh, to go in and say, Hey, doc, I've got a, this issue. Can you help me with it? Well, when the door opened, it was his teenage daughter who uh, answered the door. And my granddad, or my great-granddad, and that little girl were smitten at first sight. <laughs> they were just smitten. <clears throat> my great-granddad was a big, lanky man. Uh, I think I got a picture. It's not a very good picture, but I've got a picture in here. Matter of fact, it's the only picture ever taken of him that I know of. That, this is, that's a Xerox of a black-and-white picture of my great-grandfather. The baby he's holding in that scale is my father, who died about 12 years ago and at about age 83, I think. My great-granddad was actually in the Spanish-American War. 
up on the wall up there is a Craig Jorgensen that followed him home. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so that's another family heirloom, by the way. Anyway, uh, uh, whatever the doc gave my granddad at work, my great granddad, but he gave him one other thing. Great granddad and uh, the girl, her name was Elizabeth, uh, eloped. Well, where do you go with your new bride when you've just married an underage girl and you want to get the hightail it out of Ohio? They went to Texas, of course. Well, he got a job down there working on a, 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 a railroad gang. And uh, the foreman found out, hey, he's pretty smart. He knows his stuff. So he got a promotion after promotion until he became a bridge foreman, building bridges for the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. They were going across Texas, setting up uh, rail bridges along many a creek and river through there. And the way it worked was uh, they would uh, put a train track right up to the river, and then they'd bring in a train that held a caboose on the end of it, and they'd uh, put in a siding and then roll the caboose out onto that siding. And then they would uh, go and pick up some supplies and get some men and come back and set up and start building a bridge. Well, that caboose was my granddad's, uh, great granddad's office and, and living quarters. So uh, Elizabeth and him settled into a life of, in the original RV, a caboose. And uh, my grandfather was actually born in a caboose, in that caboose. He was the youngest of uh, uh, J.E.'s kids. And... Uh, he, well, uh, he told me a few tales of his, his father, but very few. But uh, I know that uh, you know, he had worked, <clears throat> my own grandfather had worked as a plumber, a carpenter, uh, had worked some uh, uh, machinist jobs. Uh, was, when I was young, he was a uh, uh, boiler man for a uh, uh, refinery, uh, the only refinery west of the Mississippi at that time. It was in Corsicana, Texas. Sacconi Vacuum was the name of the company. Sacconi uh, merged with another company called uh, Magnolia Oil Company and became known as Mobile Oil after a while. And then they merged with another company and became Exxon Mobil. Long story. I, and through my, great, through my granddad, I actually had six shares of uh, Exxon Mobil that he had left, left to dad. And Well, it's another story. Still have them. <laughs> It ain't much, but, you know, it's, it's the only Wheeler Dealer stock deals I do. But anyway, I fired this once. This is in 41 Long Colt. Told you I'd get to that. 41 Long Colt was a healed bullet. What is a healed bullet? Ever seen a 22 Long Rifle? That's a healed bullet. The way a healed bullet works is the bullet diameter, the diameter of the actual bullet that goes, and the diameter of the brass that holds it are exactly the same. That means that you have to have a slight little indent with a little tip sticking out of the bottom of the bullet so that it will fit inside the brass to hold it. The only major caliber that still used it, uh, at, at least into the 20th century, was the 41 Long Colt. Now, a healed bullet creates some issues with, with uh, lubricating the, the round, because in the early days they used to lube all the, the bullets that went down the barrel. If you look at, at a, a, bra or a, a cast bullet, you'll notice a lube uh, barrels, all, uh, bands all the way around it. This is because in black powder, which those are usually used in, you really need that lube just to keep down the fouling. Well, the 41 Long Colt, you only have that little tit at the end is the only thing that you can lubricate and rely on because the bullet is just hanging fancy free and it, it, it won't take uh, a lube on it. Uh, there are other ways. I mean, when they came up to like the Johnson rifle and the 30-06, uh, they came up with some kind of a wax substance that would uh, lubricate it. But they hadn't developed that yet this time. Anyway, uh, it's a it's a good uh, it's a good loop, a good bullet. And when Granddad bought this, I don't know what he had in mind then, but he carried it on him the rest of his life when he was working as a bridge foreman because uh, he had um, what they call labor relations problems, and occasionally he needed to uh, do a little bit of a uh, executive action to uh, discipline things, and uh, hence this this. No one takes from me, ever, ever. That's a family heirloom. It stays in the family. But one day I thought, you know, I like shooting 41 Long Colt. I'd like to shoot it. Well, I went to an estate sale and I bought another 41 Long Colt. This one uh, 
by checking the serial number, it's about 200 off from this one. Uh, they're exactly the same, except that's nickel and this one's blued. Uh, they're, it's a really interesting cartridge. And uh, this one, the lock lockup on it is much, much better. And it still has a little thingy on the end here, which is good. You know, I wonder if I could go to Numerich and just get one of these and put on that. That's a thought. Anyway, the one problem with this, see the grip panel here? Well, first of all, you'll notice that the, the uh, medallion for the Colt right here is just completely worn off. If you look at it compared to the one on my granddad's, his is still there. That means that this one was not used in anger as much as this one. This one, a lot of rounds went through this, and it's been held this way many, 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 many times, long enough to rub this off. And it, unfortunately, it had another little issue. They lost this side side plate on the thing. So what he did is he put two, uh, he cut and uh, glued together two pieces of, rough, of uh, leather, and then he put a screw through to hold it in place. But you'll notice the escutcheon on there. That's a U.S. wheat penny. Uh, this is 1913, as I recall, was the date on this thing. So uh, and that, that creates the escutcheon. It works. <laughs> uh, I've shot this, and it's a pretty cool pistol. Or revolver. Uh, the new Army and Navy, this is the first swing out uh, double action revolver that the US Army developed. And the Army used it in 30, 38 Colt long, or 38 long Colt, however you want to say it. And uh, this is the one that they had, they were going bang, bang, bang up against the Moros in uh, the Philippines. And they said, just give me back the old 45 long Colt uh, single action Army, or, or give me something else that will stop these weird guys, because uh, this thing didn't do it. And so they went back to the drawing board. Uh, the Navy kept using it because, you know, what's the Navy going to shoot at? Fish? <laughs> anyway, <coughs> this, uh, it does swing out and has a, uh, uh, that thingy on it. And it's, uh, uh, it, it locks up well. This one, well, it's a little bit loosey-goosey because this, heck, You'd be Lucy Goosey too if you were over 125, almost 130 years old. So uh, that is 130 years old. Come to think of it, yeah, uh, 1892, 1890. Yeah, it's 130 years old, 32 years old. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you'd be kind of loose too. Anyway, but this is an example of an early, well, the earliest uh, smokeless powder uh, double action revolver used by the used in a military fashion by the U.S. And uh, it's uh, stood up to the, the test of time quite well, I think. I mean, it's still still with us and it still works. So, and this one, this is great granddaddy's. It's going to go back in the glass case with a letter and all the other data that I've gathered on it. And uh, I'll pass that on to my kid one day. Uh, tell him, uh, don't shoot it much. By the way, I've heard that the holster this is in is actually worth more than the gun because uh, it's such a pristine example of that kind of holster of the era. I know that it, it, it's just a clip-on type and it was meant for, for this kind of carry. And I know that that's exactly how he did carry it. So, anyway, that's all I got to say. Happy trails. <laughs>